Right, welcome back to another episode of Testing the Tips, where I, as an average golfer, try out some of the tips from the leading golf YouTubers out there. And we've got another beauty today. It's from Danny Maud, and he's going to tell us a secret to how nobody tells you how to hit this thing straight. So who doesn't want to hit their driver straight, but it's a damn tough old job. And like I said, Danny Maud's going to teach us a method into perhaps doing that. Now, Danny Moore's an absolute legend. I would never criticize what he does, but I think there's an element of this which is really, really good, and an element that I'm also not so sure of. But at the end of the day, that's what testing the tips is all about. Right, so now it took me longer to put this little, pretty little pattern of golf balls together than it will to record the video itself. But this is really important, at least as a visualization. And what we're basically gonna understand in this video is how, or the path, that the club head swings on and where you position that ball plays a major part in the way you impact that ball and the direction the ball starts off on in relationship to the club face itself and it's really important to understand that and the one takeaway you will definitely get from today's video is a better understanding of how your driver face impacts on that impact location and it's key and you've got to understand it to improve your driving right so first of all understanding exactly where we position our ball with driver and it's very much just inside of the left heel take a step back with the right foot shoulders at a bit of an upward angle and i'm in pretty much a standard driver position that you're looking at right now so if i take the club back on the sort of suggested path where the sort of ball shows we're obviously going to come a little bit inside and then when we come back through are uh, hopefully hitting this on an upward blow the orange ball being uh, what we're focusing on then what's going to happen with the club head as it follows through that impact position you can see it's moving to the left and what's that doing well that club face is closing the problem with that club face closing is if we don't get to the ball at the right time in terms of if we're a little bit behind if we're a little bit leaning backwards that club face can do one or two things. It can stay open, which leads to that big slice. It can also close too quickly is the other possibility. And yet again, we can either go left or we can again still manage to get that slice on the ball. It's something that average golfers do a lot of. So the first thing we need to do is perhaps looking at changing the club face, which is the bit that Danny suggests we turn the club head in at address. And the way he says, suggests we do that is quite simple. Before we grip the club, what we're gonna do is turn it toe in. So we're going to close shut the club face effectively put that onto the ground and then he wants you to address the ball or the grip with the sort of closed position now if you look at that close up now you can see the angle of the club face is very much pointing down the left the idea is quite simple to eradicate the slice and hit that ball in a straight shot what we're doing is effectively looking to try and keep that at a um, flush impact location. Now, I've got issues with this and I'm going to give it a go now and I'll try it and see what happens for me. But the issue that I said that I had was potentially all this is doing is sort of maybe solving a problem in theory that could lead to many more down the line. And there is far better to take from this tip than actually this element, so bear with me. Right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move away, I'm gonna try this exact idea, I'm gonna close that club face up, and then gonna adopt my grip, I'm gonna see what it does to the ball flight. Right, we'll just move to one side of our pretty little pattern. I'm not sure I've picked the best hole to try this on. We've got a lot of water to potentially lose a number of golf balls. Right, so I'm gonna get very much that sort of toe in. So now I'm going to grip the club. I'm then going to open my stance up. And like I said, for me, I feel like I'm aiming inside left of those bunkers uh, on my left hand side. So let's see what happens when I adopt this. Well, 
maybe Danny, I take it back because that has worked absolutely incredibly well. I drove the ball a little bit too far, if anything, off this forward tee that we're using for this demonstration purposes. But yeah, really impressed. You can tell that I've not tried that before. I watched the video, looked at the idea and slightly questioned it, but already that has eradicated any sort of slice. And I basically drilled that ball quite um, effectively. Really impressed with what that did. So don't forget, let's go back over to our little bit of a uh, arc here that we've created. And that idea is we've got that center ball and you're going to have the benefit of this arc you're gonna to have to visualize it but get into your standard position close that face in and then adopt your grip and effectively like I said what we're doing is by the time the club head itself arrives at impact it should in theory be square and therefore just eradicating that bit of being the opposite which is open and hitting that slice so that's the first tip in which to try and get you to hit straighter drive. Today's video is brought to you in association with channel travel partner Glencore Golf and this week they've sent me out onto the Algarve in Portugal where I will be playing three different golf courses, Quinta de Val, Quinta de Ria and Quinta de Cima. And I'll be staying in nearby Tavera at the AP Cabanas Resort. The hotel is a modern design with stunning rooms and balcony views to match. And this resort has an all-inclusive option. Pour yourself a beer, a glass of wine, and take the hassle out of golf trip planning. The nearby town of Tavira is just minutes away. Today's video is shot at Quinta da Ria, which I can only describe as a hidden gem on Portugal's Algarve. As you can see, some stunning views of the ocean and plenty of water to avoid. So if you want more information about this golf trip itself or any other that you might be considering planning right now, then please head over to glencourtgolf.com for some more booking information. Right, okay, so second step is about the ball position itself. So he offers up three different concepts here in terms of straightening out your drives. Maybe one of them will work for you, maybe the others won't, and it's important you try them all. But this is phase two, and uh, so you've not, the, the sort of hooded face hasn't worked for you, maybe try this. And it's about the ball position. Now, like I said before, we would normally stand with a sort of uh, ball inside left heel. That's the, what we all understand as being the correct position. The problem is with that, and Lewis touched on this in a video a few weeks ago where we were trying to hit a lower flight with our driver. He sort of suggested that a lot of golfers aren't athletic enough to sort of move and get that club head to the correct uh, impact location when you've got the driver uh, ball position as far forward in your stance as what is known as sort of standard and also the other thing to make sure is that it is inside your heel and it's not any further forward because I've seen a lot of golfers again where this ball starts to creep forward that's horrendous in terms of that open club face and again think about that path and that slice potential the further you put that forward the worse it can get so back looking at this kind of like that's my center ball what I'm now looking at doing is moving the ball back in my stance now what I want to try and do or what Danny suggests you do it's not quite center of stance but we maybe move it back an inch or two from that inside of the heel again you can't go too far back because otherwise we're potentially putting a descending blow on the drive and again that can have a real negative impact so it might be something you want to work on but all it really means is we've got a better chance of potentially delivering that club head squarer through impact and hitting our drive straighter i'm going to move to the ball behind me and see if we can put that theory to the test and what I will be doing is aiming directly over the water a little bit more of an angle, which is a braver move. But that first drive, I think we've driven it too far and perhaps ended up in that long rough. I don't want to be too bold because this is again the first time I've tried this. So we're going to sort of, that's where I'm prepared to go to. And as you can see, um, that's quite a bit further back than I would be used to. I've just got to be careful we're not hitting that like I said with a bit of a downward blow right let's give this one a go well that's going in the water that's going in the water I don't think that's going to carry are we getting a splash yes we're getting a splash it almost carried to be fair 
But the notable thing for me there was I did feel very uncomfortable in that position and I did feel as though I was delivering that a little bit behind me. The thing I will say as the real positive is again, it was a really straight drive. There was no curvature in the ball, both left or right. And maybe my alignment would have been better suited to where I started off with that first demonstration and we would have covered it quite comfortably. But interestingly enough, the sort of closing of the club face worked far better for me. Now, there is a third explanation that Danny gives, which I'm not gonna include in this video. The main takeaway I've got from it is going back to this arc. And it's a basic understanding of how the club head travels. So if you take nothing else from the video, because like I said, I was skeptical. Okay, the toe-in bit has kind of worked for me, but I was a little bit skeptical about what that then leads to further down the line, if it's kind of one problem then leads to another. But who knows, you give it a go. But the basic thing that I really like from this is just understanding the path in which the driver um, travels on and maybe more importantly what happens to the club face itself so understanding that once you're in that position as soon as you're uh, in our standard driver position we're starting to hit on the up but then what's happening is that club face is starting to shut down so to keep it remaining square we've got to really understand exactly where our ball position is and exactly what our club head is doing at impact now as i always say that is my interpretation of danny's video and like he's an absolute genius in terms of explaining these things so my suggestion would be this go and check out the link below have a look at all the three suggestions he makes and see what you make of it but i would certainly give these a try and understanding where that club face is through impact with driver i think will help you hit straighter drives right as ever thanks for watching and thanks for the comments so far everybody's loving the testing the tip series you've got plenty more to come from all the leading golf youtubers out here this hole by the way is quinta de maria on the algarve in portugal i'm here with glencore golf and um, although it's a little bit overcast this morning this is some golf course. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow night.